Those of you who saw my Delta Airlines video last time will remember that I remarked that I'd rather save my money next time and fly Southwest Airlines instead of flying in first class again. Well, it didn't take long for that prediction to come true, hence the subject of today's video. Enjoy the video. Hey, I'm Caleb from Caleb's Aviation. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing something very exciting. I'm going to be flying with Southwest Airlines. This will be my first time flying with Southwest, and I'm really excited to try them. I'll explain more about our flights and the route and the plan for today later, but for now, let's get to Metro Airport. The first thing for me to do today was to get to Detroit Metro Airport, my home commercial airport. I also caught some good pictures of these Delta 737 and 757s heading out. However, my interest and in the subject of today's video would be all about Southwest Airlines, who, at the time of this video, I'd never flown before. The check-in was pretty quick and simple, and there were even some Halloween decorations being October 29th when I took this flight. Alright, we're through security here at Metro Airport. Quick and easy today, actually. I expected a lot worse. It's honestly not as bad as I'd expected it to be. Now, to go find my gate, because this is not it. And wouldn't you know it, even though I'm in the Evans Terminal, not the terminal home to Delta, I still managed to capture this incredible footage of their flagship A350-900 heading off to Tokyo. By the way, don't miss my behind-the-scenes video at Delta Airlines Operations here at Detroit. Pretty soon I located my gate and the Boeing 737-700 of Southwest Airlines that would be taking me on my first flight today to Baltimore Washington International Airport. The 737-700 is the smallest variant of the 737 Next Generation or NG series. The 700 will soon be replaced by the MAX 7. Soon I got in the long queue on the jet bridge to board the Southwest 737. Southwest is a major fan of squeezing in as many people as possible, but that also means very slow boarding times. I did get to see the data plate though, from Boeing, which was pretty cool. Another thing to note about Southwest is they're one of the last airlines in the world to have an all open seating policy, meaning nobody's assigned a seat before you fly, and you never know what seat you'll get. This is cool because all the seats are the same, but it also can build stress and anxiety for people who want an aisle or myself wanting a window because I'm filming a review. And wouldn't you know it, as luck had it, I sat in the very last row on the right side window of this 737-700. This plane was very full. But pretty soon we pushed off the gate and got ready to head out to the active runway. We also passed a Spirit Airlines A320 on our taxi out. Should I try to fly Spirit someday? I'd like to. Leave a comment if so. Pretty soon the pilots spooled up the engines as we turned on to our takeoff runway, runway 22 left, and prepared for departure to Baltimore. Pretty soon we took to the skies. The power on this 737-700 is quite something. Despite an almost full load, this was quite a fast takeoff. Also, now that we're up in the air, this is a good reminder to subscribe to my channel. Ring the notification bell to all, leave a like, and consider leaving me a comment if you're enjoying the video, or once you've finished it and enjoy the video. I then decided to test out the Wi-Fi which Southwest numerously advertise on almost everything in the plane. However, it never worked the entire flight. There were free snacks and drinks however, and that's always good. The tray table on this Southwest 737-700 was good sized, and actually felt pretty sturdy. Unlike some airlines with newer airplanes, like Frontier, this tray table actually worked, and it actually stayed still and level. They also brought around some of these pretzel snacks, which were pretty good, but very strong for sure. And I had my cranberry juice, as we began our descent into Baltimore. Also something worth noting, these cups were made out of bamboo, 
I thought it was pretty clever. It's at least recyclable, and there's lots of it. However, the cups taste like chopsticks, which are also made out of bamboo. Pretty soon we touched down in Baltimore, and the scale of this Southwest operation here was truly incredible. There was more than 50 gates at this airport, and almost every single one was occupied by a Southwest Airlines aircraft. This was pretty cool, and I'd strongly consider this a hub airport for Southwest. However, they avoid the mention of the word hub in any of their business models, so I don't know what you'd call it. Once getting off the 737, I also got a picture of the cockpit, thanks to the pilots for that, and I decided it was time to look around and do a little plane spotting. I captured this beautiful Southwest 737 MAX 8 in the fading sunlight, and also caught several other cool aircraft, including another 737 MAX 8 and a 737-700 on the far side taking off. There was also this Amazon Prime Air 767 freighter. This was pretty cool, as I'd never seen a Prime Air 767 before, even when I visited Cincinnati, the cargo super hub, video linked up above. I saw this Southwest 737-800 arrive to the airport. This would be my aircraft today, for my second flight up to Albany. And off went that Amazon Air 767. Throttles on full. My aircraft for this second flight was a 7-year-old 737-800. I also then decided to grab dinner in the airport, at r and Seafood Bar. I'd never tried this place before, but it was pretty good. And right next to the restaurant were some awesome window views, like this Southwest 737-800 pulling up, the same type that would be taking me to Albany, New York today. And this would be the best view I'd get this entire trip. Alright, I'm here at my gate, and behind me is the 737-800 that's going to carry us to Albany. We're about ready to go. This flight should be more of a review since the camera's actually working now, after more money than I care to admit. And we're about ready to go. Should be a great flight. Looks like a great looking plane. Try to get some better pictures here as the sun fades. And yeah, we'll make our way up to Albany. Pretty soon the free snacks were loaded aboard my 737. Always a good sign there. And the golden hour views continued as another Southwest 737 was heading out. Here's another Boeing 737-800 the type that would be taking me to Albany, New York today. The 800 is the medium-sized variant of the next generation family of 737, to be replaced with the Max 8, as seen here. Another unique aspect of Southwest, not only do they have open seats, you have to take a place in line to board. Based on your group and position on your ticket, you stand in line and wait to board the aircraft. My spot was B-34. Thank you. Here we go, flight two of two. That's one thing I don't particularly like about Southwest. You have to stand in line, and you're never sure right where you'll be. Not only do you not know your seat, you don't know if you'll be on the plane first, middle, or last. There's someone sitting in this room? Nobody is sitting in this room. Maybe you. Okay, I think you are. Thank you. Once on board, I checked out my seat, which we'll look at closer later, and pulled out my safety card because, well, safety is critically important. At this point, I was ready to go. The main cabin doors were closed, everyone was aboard, I was checking out my seat to the odd views of some of my fellow passengers, and I even won the seat lottery with an empty middle seat between myself and the aisle passenger. There was also another great view of the 737 MAX 8, 
and a 737-700, just like my last fight, pushing off its gate as well. Unfortunately, all the flights next to us were taking off and getting ready to leave, but for some reason, not ours. Turns out the crew hadn't filed their sufficient paperwork that had to happen before we could leave the gate. So we sat for about 25 minutes, as everybody else around us took to the skies. Very frustrating. I snapped a picture and put it on Instagram during this long wait. By the way, make sure to follow me there at the handle above. And finally, we actually did manage to push off the gate and head out to the runway. We had a very long taxi from our gate all the way out to our takeoff runway here at Baltimore Airport. Unfortunately, we also had a lot of scratches on our window, which made these weird reflective light views that you're seeing of all the lights making these weird moonlight patterns. Additionally, it took a long time to taxi because we stopped and were held in an air traffic control penalty box for about 17 minutes. Finally, we did make it out to our takeoff runway, although I have no idea which tonight. Our captain throttled up the engines, and we rolled down our runway on this very beautiful evening. The weather was almost perfect, which I certainly didn't expect in Baltimore at this time of year. As we took off toward the skies for our very short flight to Albany this evening, once up in the air, there was an expedited snack and drink service, as they wanted to get everyone in the cabin their snacks and drinks, so we could go to sleep if we wanted to. I didn't sleep this entire time, however, it was nice that the crew acknowledged this, and tried to rush the service. Same options as last time, by the way, with these pretzel twists, which I had to order again, and this time I changed things up with apple juice. This would mark the end of service, as we reached about 10,000 feet, and the seatbelt sign came on again. Also, the cabin had these lights on the entire time. These lights make some beautiful blue colors of the cabin ambience, but they make my face and anything I try to record this ugly shade of blue. This time I sat in wall 12, not the very last row on the 737, which was nice. For those interested, here's our route map for tonight out, out of Baltimore Airport up to Albany, New York the capital of New York State. This flight would be quite short, taking only an hour and 14 minutes to cover 288 miles today. By the way, Anyone who can remember the last time I flew to Albany, leave me a comment. I'll pin it below if you're right. The hint is there's only one other flight. It shouldn't take you long to find it. Once landing into this nasty rainy weather, it was time to get off our 737 and head into the terminal here at Albany Airport. While we're here in Albany throughout all the rainy, nasty weather, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed these videos, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Maybe I'll fly Southwest again. Make sure the video does so, well. So, to conclude, how was the flight and the experience on Southwest? The first flight was pretty good. Despite not recording very much due to my own stupidity in filling my memory card, it was really good. And the second flight, as you just saw, was also pretty good. Both aircraft types felt pretty similar, although the 737-700 certainly felt older than the newer 7-year-old 800 I flew on the second flight. Overall, the best thing about Southwest Airlines, though, was the price. Far better than what Delta wanted on this route, on a CRJ-900 from Detroit. Granted, you didn't have to stop, but I'd much rather fly Southwest any time. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed. If so, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll be wishing you blue skies and tailwinds.